here in Colombo uh, tomorrow night, uh, practice this afternoon. Um, as always, guys, if you have a question for Aaron, um, please uh, raise your hand and uh, we'll get underway as soon as possible. We'll start off with Mel. Uh, Aaron, it's obviously been a uh, pretty tough work over there um, on those uh, pitches, particularly the last uh, few. I just uh, wondered what, uh, looking back on the series loss, uh, what you put it down to? Oh, I think there's been a combination of a few things, but the, the one thing we haven't been able to do is get that really big partnership to go deeper into the game. With any time it feels like we've started started to get some momentum in the game, we we lose a wicket, and as you know, in these conditions, once you lose one, it you they go back to back pretty quick. So, I think just maximising that that main partnership in the game where where you can get sort of to the 40th over maybe three down has has hindered us a bit and um i just wondered given the uh conditions and given the sort of the the relative success of the sri lankan spinners how throw if you were sort of throwing forward to the test series how do you see sort of that panning out in the conditions oh, i think it'll be really similar mate to just based on purely on how the wickets have played, even when they look really good here, they, they've spun quite a bit. So I, I assume that the test wicket down in Gaul is, is going to be the same. There's there's not a huge amount of grass on the squares here, but um, yeah, that, that will definitely spin 100%. And maybe it's been a good preparation for our test guys. Mm. Yep. And I wonder if you can give us a... Uh... A rundown on the injuries uh, in terms of where blokes sit at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of them. We, we know that um, Travis Head, he'll miss the next game with a hamstring injury. Um, Starkey's still not right with his finger. He, he won't be available tomorrow. This the Where it is, the, the stitching and things like that, it's just not quite 100% healed. So with, without being able to bowl with tape on, yeah, he'll be out for tomorrow as well. So... Yeah, just a, just one more to add to the list at the moment. So how about his head's uh, hamstring? Is it uh, something that uh, will keep him out of the test or is it more of a precaution? Or? Oh, I think it's a bit, a bit more of a precaution, um, especially where he fields. He, he fields in the outfield, so he does quite a lot of Ks um, out there and, and the ground's quite heavy. So um, I'm not sure what he's, what he's looking like for the test matches, but... Um, yeah, he definitely is not available for tomorrow. Thanks. Andrew McGlashan. Thanks, Cole. Hey, Aaron. Um, just to go back to sort of the conditions and things, can you just talk us through the, your thinking a little bit in the fact you haven't played Mitch Sweeps in the last couple of games and also just more the general balance of side you've gone with, very all-rounder heavy with, with Cam there at number eight? Yeah, we, we've, we've gone with the... We, we think that runs are probably more of a premium in these conditions. So that's why we've gone with the extra all-rounder and, and unfortunately, Mitch Swepson's missed out the last couple of games, but that's purely just a balance of the side, just trying to get more runs out of the, out of the game. Um, we feel as though when we've got Maxi at seven, Cam Green at eight, that that we can stretch those those partnerships and and may, maybe we need to put more of an emphasis on the, the top order to make sure that once we get in, we, we're taking those partnerships really deep. But um, all in all, we still feel as though that's the that's the right balance of the side. Um, we, we just haven't quite got enough runs. And just to follow up on what Mal was asking previously, um, will you be, um, will Steve be available tomorrow? Or is he going to just be nursed through to the test series now? Uh, I don't think he'll be available tomorrow, but that could change. I mean, he, he'll be down at training this afternoon. Uh, we'll go down there and and have a look at the conditions and everything. But from from what I understand, he, he won't be available uh, for tomorrow. Cool. And if I can just go one more, just a, a slightly different topic. There's been a couple of suggestions on social media today that the um, the crowd tomorrow being. Sorry, mate, just lost your heart. Yeah, sorry, I, I, so I, my computer muted myself. Um, I, there's a suggestion on social media tomorrow that the, the crowd will be asked to come down in yellow as a as a bit of a thank you for you guys for making this tour. I mean, I, I'm not suggesting for any minute that you're content to lose matches, but just, just looking at the atmosphere this series, has it, has it given you a, 
a view of like that the, there's bigger things at play here and the joy that the Schlanken crowds have had in this series? Oh, it's been amazing. The any time we tour here, the the hospitality, the the love we get from the fans is unbelievable. So, yeah, it'd be great if they all did come down and wear yellow. But um, yeah, it'll still be a hard fought, hard fought game on the field. The um, I think the the reality is that we've been outplayed in this series. But yeah, they're they're a fantastic team and and a brilliant place to tour. Thanks, Aaron. Louis. Uh, Finch, I just wanted to ask you about um, Matt Kernerman. Um, what did you know about him when he first got drafted into the squad and, and what have you made of his um, his performances? Yeah, he's been really impressive. I've played a few games against him, uh, never with him. So uh, the the way that he thinks through the game and, and the plans that he's got and, and the confidence in his own abilities has been really impressive. So um, he, he's someone who I didn't know he had a lap um, until until the other day when he, when he pulled out the lap with a few runs to win, but um, yeah, he's a, he's a lovely guy who, who tries his heart out. He's, he's brilliant in the field and, and he's someone who I think with, um, with Queensland, I mean, you, you don't play on a huge amount of spinning wickets. So for him to be able to continue to, to play on wickets that, um, that offer a little bit of assistance, I think that'll just continue to, to see him grow. And, and is it too early? Like, obviously, you've got Ash, who's got the, the side injury and, um, you know, he's in the test squad and, and you might need some cover. Is it too early for, for Matt to be thinking about that format too? That's that's well and truly swimming out of my lane, mate. Um, test selection, Jesus. I, I get the heebie-jeebies thinking about putting white pads on. So, um, no, I, I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest. Mel. Um, thanks, Cole. Hey, Aaron. Um, if you don't mind indulging me with a bit of a, a big picture question, um, there have been quite a, a few, I guess, in some ways, uh, pretty big events happening in, in world cricket in the past couple of weeks, whether it's the IPL mega deal and the possibility of further expansion there. Um, we, we've seen this new tournament in the UAE come along with a, a lot of money, the new South Africa tournament, the big bash now, you know, bringing in the draft. Those ODIs against South Africa could be a casualty of, of all of this as well as, as Cricket Australia tries very hard to get big name Australian players playing in the big bash. So, so with all of that happening, I, I'm just wondering if you think that cricket kind of needs to find a way to keep these bilateral white ball series going, whether it's it's ODIs or T20s, are they really important? Can players get enough if they play, a, you know, in a lot of these tournaments as, as cricket tries desperately to find a way to squeeze in these series that sometimes we're not always sure where their relevance is? Yeah, I, I think that you still need international cricket, obviously, to... Be able to get the amount of content. the The standard isn't isn't the same when you play domestic competitions. To so to be able to come in and out of international cricket is a real challenge. And um, when when you've got when you've got world class players turning up in, in a bilateral series, that it's so hard to just flick in and out of, of that mode. So I think for the for the whole, I think overall we need to look at how it can all work together um, because they're, they're, the marketplace is getting condensed quite a bit. And um, I, I think, yeah, it's, but bilateral series definitely is so important to the game. I mean, do, do you look at, is it something that you look at and think, gosh, is say ODI cricket, bilateral ODI cricket, is that in, in trouble now? Or you, there are lots of suggestions that T20 cricket should just be played outside of, of World Cups at, you know, in these domestic franchise uh, tournaments? Yeah, there's, there's arguments for both of them, but I reckon when you, when you, if you take international T20 out of it, then the World Cups will become less relevant as well. So um, you, you need to, you need to keep playing international T20 cricket, um, maybe three, three game ODI series is the way to go forward, not, not five. So yeah, um, it is a lot of cricket in a short space of time, but we understand that the Future Tours program is is being smashed at the moment because of because of the COVID um, holes that that left in the schedule. But I'm sure over the next 
little while that that will start to manage itself and, and it'll be a little bit clearer. Thank you. Last one here, guys, Josh McLean. Hi, Aaron. Um, speaking of playing lots of cricket, do you sort of, do you feel a sense of disappointment that this series has got away from you? Oh, we're disappointed with with the series not being on the line still. I mean, to the reality is we've been in every game the with the bat. We've, we've had opportunities to chase down uh, some reasonable totals and, and we just haven't taken them. There's, like I said earlier, there's there's been times when we feel the game's just slipped away from us, but not through any, um, but through low risk cricket, which is quite strange as well to you, you build a partnership that the game seems to be going in a similar, in a direction and then you lose a wicket, you lose back to back wicket. So I think the reality is that when, for both teams, when the middle order all get starts in every game, I think that that shows that the wickets have been, they've been okay to bat on, but we just haven't maximised those those partnerships throughout the middle of the game where where you can go really deep into to the innings. And, um, I mean, you've proven yourself time and time again in big innings and World Cups and what have you, but do you ever tire of the question marks around your form as soon as you make a low score? Not really. It's just part of the job. The... Um, there's there's always there's always people pushing for your for your spot so no nah, it's okay doesn't bother me thanks Aaron cheers mate thanks Josh and thanks to uh, Aaron Finch for joining us today guys um, we'll catch up with all of you uh, a little bit later on thank you thanks, thanks guys.